That was the wrong button. <laughs> Let's do some news. Today's date is March 29th, 2019. My name is Mike B. Welcome to Just News. Joined today by these guys. These guys. The Lander, Matt Martha, Yagrix, Ever Adept, Ira, JD, Agamoria, uh, Little Boots, Patrick, and Ira again, Martha again, Ryan Hart. They're all here. Everybody's here today. Buffy's in the summer too. D's in their summer as well. Ray's in there. There we go. All right. We got everybody. Dark, Matrix, Neil Lander. We got everybody. It's great. This is, this is lots of co-hosts, lots of opinions, lots of people. All right. But we're going to kick things off with uh, probably the most recent news, recent announcements uh, concerning concerning this this game. So else, uh, concerning this little game, a little franchise called Borderlands. Uh, some of you guys may or may not have seen the PAX East. Um, <laughs> They did so. So they basically brought a bunch of people into an auditorium at uh, at PAX East, and they they locked the doors, uh, and they they did really bad magic tricks, um, and had a lot of really bad uh, clusterfucks of uh, of uh, technical errors uh, for basically the entire hour. It was great. It was uh, it was it was pretty fucking fantastic. Uh, but in case you didn't know, yes, um, you are getting another. Entry into the Borderlands series. Uh, the trailer, which I'm actually going to play on loop here while we discuss things, uh, to me it looks good. I'm not. I am not a. Uh, I'm not at all a Borderlands fan. I couldn't get into the cell shading initially. Uh, this actually feels like a little bit more of an advanced kind of take on the cell shading. They still have cell shading in this in terms of the art style, but they add enough grit into the textures in between all the cell shading bits that actually doesn't look like shit. I feel like compared to like the original one, I couldn't stand it because it was just basically like a solid color for a texture and then like a dark black bold outline. It was just like, it just, it just, it, it hurt my retinas. All right. But this actually doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad for, uh, for a trailer, but apparently not everybody thinks that it looks that great. Uh, over at, uh, Polygon. They said that, uh, <laughs> which we, 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 are, we already know, Polygon, I know, I know. But still, I gotta read it to you guys, because it's still pretty funny. Uh, let me see if I can see it. Uh, what do they say? Mm, uh, no, do, 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 see. Uh, here we go. It says, but after this lackluster trailer, I'd welcome news about a Battle Royale mode, because what else is there? This looks like an expansion, not another proper sequel to, not a proper sequel to a major franchise. franchise. So, uh, yeah, Polygon actually says that they would have much rather seen a Battle Royale for this. I just don't know what the fuck they're, where they're going with this. What the, what the fuck? <laughs> they were like, they were like, hey, does anybody on the writing staff know what a Borderlands is? Because we need to write something about it. Is it a Battle Royale? No. Oh, man. And for some reason, that, that was what they ran with. Really, really, really weird. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was uh, Kotaku. Sorry, Kotaku. <laughs> But I'm sure they probably would have said the same thing, but they, they didn't actually. Uh, but yeah, Polygon's take on it is that it looks like more of the same. And I feel like, I, I feel like uh, with, with Borderlands, is that not what, what people want? Like, if they came out with a new Mass Effect game, I would want more of the same. You know, like, I really like Mass Effect 1, 2, 3. Uh, Arm the, the, what's it called? Um, I can't even remember the name because I know how bad it was. That one, uh, Andromeda, uh, uh, that one is a throwaway. But uh, but if they were like, yeah, with Mass Effect Four, it'll be like more of the same. I'll be like, bitch, fuck yes. I don't care if it's like if it's this if it's you know maybe slightly updated graphics, which is pretty much what we have with uh, uh, with uh, as you can see with with Borderlands Three. Um, but uh, but yeah, people seem to really like the story. See, people seem to really like the setting. People seem to really like a, b a billion guns. Uh, actually, I would say that Borderlands is the game that really introduced the fact that people really fucking like having lots of guns, uh, and lots of, there's a billion guns, and lots of mods, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Guns with legs, for example, which is like, what the fuck is that? So, 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 you're gonna see probably more, like, indie titles and shit, like, uh, like, pop out where it's gonna have, like, guns with legs and shit, like, some kind of, like, self-sustaining gun, you can take a weapon out, it's like, oh, yeah, you can use an AR, and then you can throw it on the ground, it'll basically sit next to you like a turret, and it'll run around, like, you're gonna see some shit like that. Borderlands has definitely been one of those games that have done, uh, that have done the shooter genre right, I feel like. As a whole, shooter RPG, it has definitely done it right, and it's really set a standard, um, and it's really helped move things along. Now, that being said, the, the actual presentation was fucking weird, man! Like, they just really, really couldn't get their shit together. Uh, where do we even start? Let's see. Well, first off, let's talk about the other announcements and everything that came out with this. Let me actually go get another video queued up here. Um, 
We also got a uh, Risk of Rain 2, which I believe you could download and play the demo right now on uh, on Steam. Is that correct? Is it the demo? We're not sure. We're not sure. We're, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna circle back to about to Borderlands in just a minute because there's a lot of things. Uh, if you got a drop weapon every second, you'd be over thirty. You'd be over thirty one years older by the time the last one hit the ground. Jesus Christ! <sighs> Fuck. Oh, it's in EA, so you can play it now. Great, great. Um, I actually did an E for breakfast, I think, on, on uh, uh, the first Risk of Rain. And when I saw this video, I was like, I was like, what fucking game is this? I had no idea. Uh, and, but, but real quick, though, the soundtrack already sounds great. It just sounds great. Kind of, kind of has a little bit of a, uh, yeah. Kind of nice. I like it. Anyways, so uh, uh, yeah, Risk of Rain 2. I mean, it looks looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Uh, what other kind of weird shit do we get? Wait, sorry, we got the uh, the new Rick and Morty game. Well, let's call it that. Trovers, Trovers. Uh, I got it right here, actually. Trovers saves the universe. This is a fucking weird one. If you didn't see the trailer, I'll play I'll play a piece of it here for you guys. Uh, let me see. Do do do. Fuck this bullshit. Um, oh, oh my, oh, um, back to you in the studio, Chuck. Fuck you, I don't give a shit. Ahem, ahem, <clears throat> sorry about that, folks. Clearly, lots of outrage over these dogs. I want a divorce, too. And you're keeping the kids because you don't respect me. You push me, and you push me. We are the abstainers. Holy shit, that's what the abstainers look like? Why can't you just respect that I don't want to rotate my chair? I don't want to be jiggling around. They look just like the, the guy who's got Fuck the dogs it. in his eyes causing all this trouble. Shut the fuck up, Trover. No one needs to hear your commentary about everything. By the way, they have like two of these like tape tape stop fucking jokes here, which I thought was a bit overkill. You could you could do one tape stop oh uh, tape stop joke, but I feel like two is definitely pushing it. You know, I was going to fucking let that play in the background here. You guys need visuals of it. Uh, so yeah, this this is another game that's coming out uh, from the creator of uh, um, of. Uh, uh, from the creators of Rick and Morty. Uh, and what's funny about that, actually, if I may go ahead and do this and pull up another tweet here, this is actually pretty late. Justin Roiland, the uh, the creator of, uh, co-creator of uh, uh, of the show, actually tweeted this out. And he said, uh, at PAX East today, PAX East 430, a comedy and games panel with Greg Rice from Double Fine, Danny Homan, writer on Borderlands 3, Kevin Zoon, creator of Octodad, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, this was This was actually teased out before they actually announced that a uh, Borderlands Three was uh, was actually happening, so we all got got pretty much got noticed pretty early on that uh, that it wasn't going to be a BR. But Randy Pitchford also said at the beginning that Randy uh, that he what he said he said that BRs are great, but that's not what we're doing. So so all of that is squashed. Borderlands Three is not going to be a BR. We're safe. We're safe, and it's not going to be on mobile either. Woo woo! That was a close one. Uh, but the weirdness was that, and I, I don't have any footage of this, and, and, and so let's talk about that for a second. Uh, I don't have any footage of the actual convention, or sorry, the actual, uh, um, keynote, the announcements, because they deleted it. They deleted a VOD. It was, I mean, I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure it's, there's like compilations and shit. I'm sure it's out there. Uh, but the actual VOD is missing. And you're like, well, it's a company. It's a, it was on the company switch. Maybe they deleted it. It's like, no, no, no. They have VODs for everything else that they've streamed. If you look at their VOD list, they have VODs for everything else. But for some reason, they just don't have that one. I wonder why. You know why? It's because the, the whole thing was a fucking shit show. It was just, it was, it was, it was. We've had in the games industry, you guys know this, right? I mean, this is what happens. You get you get people who maybe are not um they're 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 not people that necessarily need to be on a stage uh, uh talking about a product and 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 trying to uh you know be likable and all that stuff. Like not everybody, not everybody is made for that. And so again, like you know, in this industry, we've seen a lot of situations where it's like, oh wow, like this is this is a really awkward uh, uh, you know, keynote or announcement or whatever, because the person is just not meant to be up there. Um, they didn't delete the clips. Oh, of course, that's great. Oh, that, I thought that was pause. Hey, MLM, thank you so much. Uh, let me go ahead and pause those things real quick. Appreciate it. Good test. Good test. Uh, we will provide 10 years of engaging content. Borderlands, I'm about to end this whole man's career. Well, we'll we're, we're talking. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. 
Um, so the, uh, uh, let's put the awkward nerd programmer on stage. I mean, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It was definitely, this is one of those situations where it wasn't necessarily that the hosts were awkward. I mean, the, the guy who came out and did like the, the, um, uh, talk about the whole publishing thing and all the different games they're working with and everything and all that. Uh, he was definitely very nervous. Uh, and, and rightfully so. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's. It's tough to get up in front of us, get out in front of a stage and, and talk, you know, and do all that stuff. I mean, fuck, I don't think I could do it unless you like surprise me with it. If you're like, Mike, you got to get out there. Go. I'd be like, oh, shit. OK, I could do this. Right. But if you told me like a day in advance, I'd be a fucking wreck. I would <laughs> I would just I would just be on all kinds of downers and shit. And just chugging Benadryl backstage and shit before I go on. That way I could just be like, just be as calm as possible. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I'm not saying that I could do a better job, <laughs> but, uh, but there are people out there who can, and, uh, they're not usually the ones that get up in front of everybody and make these presentations, but it wasn't necessarily their fault. Like I said, Randy Pritchford came out, some guy was standing next to him. who didn't say a word almost the entire time. Uh, and, uh, uh, and he did magic. Did you guys, did you guys, did you guys see the magic? Oh, what is this? Is this a, uh, oh, hold on a second. This is a good clip here. This we get, I want to give people an idea. Of the uh, of of the actual te technical uh, difficulties that they ran into, like first off, they couldn't play any of the videos. Like the videos would play and then they would stop. What did they, uh, uh, so you want to hear a story, huh? So you want to hear a story, huh? Rewind. So you want to hear a story, huh? Just over and over and over. Um, here, let's go. Hope you witness these world premieres. So you want to hear a story, huh? <laughs> Wake up. All oh, this is live. I'm uh, this is this so, this is it. This, this is what happened. Story, huh? <laughs> it didn't loop. This is a new take. They keep on trying. <laughs> Look, it's just it's just it just didn't work out for them, man. It didn't work out for them. You know, it's one of those things that, yeah, you set up and everything's supposed to be chill and it's supposed to work. And the, I guess apparently it was a 4K video that were probably running off of like a, a 5200 RPM drive or something. And it just did not, with Windows Media Player, it just didn't work. Yeah, trying to play, yeah, off a crappy laptop. Yeah, dark, yeah, same, same page. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just not, uh, it just didn't work. It just didn't work out for them. Uh, lots of technical difficulties. They, they, <sighs> They improvised a couple things to get by, but uh, but then he started doing magic tricks, which was like really weird. Don't know why they did magic tricks, but they did, and they got Darshell Stevens on stage, which I thought was kind of I thought I was like, wow, what are the odds that uh, Darshell Stevens, who is a, a very popular uh, lewd uh, model slash cosplayer, um, that they got her up on stage? Um, just like, oh, it ran people in the crowd. It is actually, it's, they just say whose birthday is it? And her birthday is tomorrow. You can see, here's a clip. I just went through the yeah, clips here. You. And you can see, this is Darshell uh, up here. And they did a mad trick. I don't know what the trick was, but there it is. He's like, oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm amazing. It's so good. A miracle, you guys. A miracle, you guys. A miracle that actually worked. Uh, but yeah, they did magic for like a really long time. Uh, so odd. They did say that they were going to, they're going to, uh, he said, I promise we're going to finish big talking about the show at the very beginning. He said, I promise we're going to finish big. And then at the end, they, the, I guess the, the big part was that they're going to announce Borderlands three, which is a big deal. We already knew it was happening though, because of the, the creator the, uh, uh, Broylan actually, um, Royland actually, uh, announced it already for us, but also, um, what'd they say? Oh yeah. Uh, April 3rd, come back for more information. So they really didn't even like give us a whole lot of information on um on the game like we we know all we know is what they have with the teaser which is it's a very dense teaser like that video has a lot of stuff going on in it like a ton of stuff going on it so so you could actually go through and dissect it and do all this stuff and you know like they like to they like to put in all kinds of easter eggs everywhere uh so you know it's chock full of those and you know they they, they really love their easter eggs because they spent the first like 20 minutes of the actual uh, uh, the announcement keynote to, to talk about almost every single Easter egg in the first teaser with the statuette and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, it was just, man, it's just a structurally very, very odd presentation. So we don't know anything about it. We don't know a release date. 
April 3rd could be, April 3 could be the release date. We don't know. It could be. Uh, it could be when they say, okay, cool, uh, April 3rd, you could put your pre-orders in, and the release date is going to be September or something like that, like Christmas time, right? So just in time for Christmas. Uh, we also don't know where it's going to be, uh, where they're going to sell the game on for PC, rather. Obviously, it's going to be available uh, through other platforms and whatnot, <clears throat> um, like you know, Xbox and PlayStation 4. You know, they're, they're going to be available there. But for PC, we actually don't know. And obviously, right now, there's a lot of controversy in terms of like how Epic likes to run things uh, with the, with their bot exclusives and whatnot. So we're worried about that. Somebody found a tweet. Uh, somebody in Discord actually linked this earlier today. I uh, found a tweet where Randy Pitchford says, I am excited to support the Epic Game Store. That's all he says. That's all he says. And then he follows up and he says, I've been asked a lot today to add more color. Our friends at Epic are great people who care about the health of our industry and the value of creators, big and small. Their leadership is formed. So really, he didn't really expand on anything what he meant by that. Um, he just said specifically, just out of the blue, he's just like, I love Epic. And that was it. <laughs> And so further down, somebody says, I'm not. And he says, why? And he says, I'm worried that it's code for an exclusivity deal for some future content and titles. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? A PC is a PC. Who cares which store you get your games from? I'm just curious on the mindset. I am a customer on lots of different PC platforms. And he says, I prefer the freedom of choice. And the basic the argument goes, he doesn't respond again. Uh, but you could see, I mean, you could see, just take a look at this here. If we just want to look at this by the numbers, right? I'm not 238 likes. I'm worried that that's code for an exclusivity deal for future content titles, 230 likes. What's wrong with that? 36 likes, 233 <laughs> comments. That's called, when you see somebody's getting ratioed, that's what that means right there. I haven't read any of these things, so I have no idea what, you know, like what the follow-up is and all this stuff, but this guy, wow, this guy, squids rule. Damn, get him. Get him. Holy shit. There you go. Uh, and he basically just goes through and he's kind of just, yeah, I guess he further discusses it some more. But really, I think just I think the takeaway from this is that there is there is a possibility, a pretty strong possibility, that uh Randy um Randy Pitchford is going to be uh dropping this thing to uh to Epic, just like he drops the USB drives full of barely legal teens at medieval times. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I guess we'll have to just wait and see. Uh, on April 3rd, we'll probably get some more information then. But until then, you said what? <laughs> oh, it's that guy. Yes, it's that guy. <laughs> we talked about it a few episodes uh, uh, back, Just News. We talked about it. Uh, I don't remember which episode it was, but we definitely went uh, pretty, pretty in depth uh, about the whole thing. What? I'm just stating what I, he actually said. That's what was on it. He was like, hey, it wasn't it wasn't underage. It was barely legal. Like Keith said that they were barely legal teens. <laughs> OK, I'm not making this shit up. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> So I guess, I guess that's pretty much it with Borderlands 3 because we really didn't get any information. All we got was a very entertaining one hour show uh, full of magic and surprises and all kinds of crazy technological weirdness and everything. Uh, and we, uh, we just don't know anything else outside of that. So <sighs> nothing wrong with it. If it's barely legal. Those girls are always totally on plus. They always, they always get you like that, huh? Oh, I'm just trying to put my kid through. I'm trying to uh, go to college. That's what they always tell you. And you're like, wait a minute, you're not going to college. Huh. Got me. Hmm. Ah, man. What is this, Patrick? Oh, God. Uh, about his... Has he... Has Randy been pretty swiss about his fetishes in general public, Mr. Relaxation? Actually, that... I don't know. I have not... Can, I cannot confirm that whatsoever. But just the fact that he actually came out and said that... I mean, first off, you shouldn't have to be private with your... Whatever your... I mean, if you feel like expressing yourself with like kind of things you like to do behind closed doors, like, that's yeah, totally fine. We joke off. Do we joke... We joke off. <laughs> that's like... That's like a really funny jerk. Uh, no, so, so we joke about that kind of stuff all the time. I think that's fine, you know? So it's, 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 it's totally fine if he wants to do that. It just... It just doesn't... It's, it's not a good... It's not good optics when you're... When you're leaving a USB drive full of porn... Um, 
somewhere because it means that you're downloading porn and saving it to USB drive for some fucking weird reason. And I, I don't I mean, maybe because he travels and he just wants to have porn on the go just in case you never know. You never know. Porn and company secrets. Oh, you're right. That's right. That part was pretty important, too. That's right. There were company secrets on there, but also porn. All right. So uh, electronic arts. Let's talk about electronic arts for a minute. Uh, somebody had a really good acronym replacement for that. And I can't remember what it was. It was like early assholes or something like that, or electronic assholes or something like that. It was pretty great. Um, <clears throat> EA, for the most part, I feel like uh, has been kind of running just just kind of even kilter, right? Like they they've had their ups and downs. Worst company in the world, all that good stuff, right? And I feel like they've plateaued. I don't know where they plateaued, but I definitely feel like they've been kind of cruising. Maybe a bit more on the shitty side, right? But they've been kind of cruising. Now nothing's really happening. They, they release a Apex. People are pretty thrilled about that. So go like, oh, shit. Apex is actually pretty good. Awesome. People are they're great. Uh, Anthem. Anthem needs some work. There's a little bit of ire about that, but some people are really enjoying it. So it's like, okay, maybe that maybe that balances out. Maybe that's even, right? Like Destiny. It's like a lot of people play Destiny, and love it. A lot of people hate it. I feel like that's kind of even. Uh, so, but unfortunately, uh, their uh, uh, their bottom line is not. Even because they had to lay off a whole bunch of people in the uh, Japan and Russia offices. <clears throat> so earlier this week, they, they laid off 350 people. And the way this is worded is actually a little bit difficult to really parse because it does feel like they're saying 350 people initially from the Japanese off the Japan offices. And then later they're like, oh, they also closed Russia. But there's no update on the actual uh, uh, the actual layoff number that I've, that I've seen unless the number was added later and they just integrated it without necessarily indicating that it was going to be for both or combined or just the one or whatever uh so yes uh, they actually had a um uh, a series of layoffs that they did they pulled a blizzard uh, <laughs> and they let go of 350 people mostly related to marketing and publishing yeah, another dude with this game, Anthem Dead's E just wrecked us all. <laughs> well, I mean, like, that that whole theory, we're just going to sidetrack here, not part of the news or anything, but uh, uh, that whole theory that popped up on Reddit earlier, I talked about it a little bit before the show. Um, we aren't going to, like, discuss it because it, se it seems like this r slash conspiracy level shit, right? Uh, somebody said that they figured out a way to, um, <clears throat> because of the way that the game builds profiles for the player to dictate what kind of loot that they get somebody figured out a way to basically give themselves a new profile build themselves a new profile that would give them more loot basically working the system um later on in that thread it was a reddit thread later on in that thread people people said that it was it was an old thing that kept keeps getting dug up every once in a while and so that's not necessarily that big uh of a deal but wouldn't that be interesting though if the reason why ea is like um uh, the EA, the, 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 the AI profiling thing, chalk it up to false until proven legit. Exactly. Yeah. So like, wouldn't it be interesting though, if they really were developing uh, a type of, you know, we'll call it AI technology because that's what everyone's calling everything these days. Um, a learning computer that will actually m like moderate what kind of uh, uh, loot is given based off of the things that, uh, that, that, that players are doing in the game. Um, Obviously, you could program some of these things in, but every person plays the game a little bit differently. When you have an open world game that gives you so many different options and different ways you could go do things, you don't necessarily want to give them, you know, something that maybe they don't want to use or something that's not going to make them buy more loot boxes or something, right? So, I, I again, this is false until proven legit, but I still think it's kind of interesting. I need an AI that monitors my loot as well. Doesn't Pornhub have an option? I have a system that actually, yeah, it does, I think. It's like based off of your previous views. If you make an account, they'll actually go through and they'll uh, um, and they'll actually suggest new things to you, like kind of like Amazon does. Machine learning driven to the table drop chance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Merv Zing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's cool. I mean, it's I think it's cool technology, but there's no way they're gonna like they're not gonna like. But like for example, if if you don't if you don't use sniper rifle or something, right? If you're like I'm never gonna use sniper rifle, uh, and then then you play the game, it's not gonna be like you know, the idea would be great is if you don't ever get a sniper rifle, right? But really what they'd probably do is give you a sniper rifle. So that way they can say, hey, we gave you something. It wasn't what you wanted. Oh, maybe try loot boxes. Here's the store, right? That's that's more than likely what it would be used for. Technology is great, but yeah, yeah, they're not going to be using it for good. We already know this. They're going to do it to uh, uh, to get paid. Um, <clears throat> and I was linked. I was linked. Uh, uh, and this actually link was uh, was popped was uh, passed around a little bit. Um, 
So EA let go of 350 people. We'll say 350, right? Give or take some. Um, and then people are, are pointing out that, oh, well, hold on a second, because, you know, EA paid Ninja a million dollars to play Apex Legends. So why is it <laughs> his fucking face? Why like why why are we why are we paying one person a million dollars and laying off like 350 people? It's kind of fucked up. 350 people, a million dollars doesn't go that far. It really doesn't. So it's not it's not like not paying Ninja a million dollars was gonna save all these jobs. It wouldn't have saved all these jobs. Now this this is where that money's at. This is the, uh, uh, these is basically salary.com. This is all the uh, listings of the, uh, uh, the C-level employees at, um, uh, at EA. This is where the money's at. This is where you could kind of trim some of the fat. Like you figure if, if the average, let's say the average employee that was laid off made a hundred thousand dollars, which is pretty high. I would say that's pretty high for probably for where they're located. Right. Um, if the average, if the average salary for the person that was laid off was a hundred thousand dollars, then that means because part of what uh, EA's issue was is that, oh, we had a bad quarter, but we're looking forward to next quarter being a little bit better, right? Um, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could just make this money last a little bit longer to, to keep people on board for the next, the next quarter? Because the next quarter you're going to report, it's like, oh, man, we got all these profits. Why? Because you laid off a bunch of people. And then you got to go back on a hiring spree and hire a bunch of people again and then lay them all off again because these people mean nothing to these companies. And it's like, okay, so, so how much would it cost? Okay, so if you have 100,000 people, say if you have 350 people, or let's just say 400, okay, because more than 350 was laid off for sure. Uh, let's just say 400, uh, and it just also makes the numbers a little easier. Uh, $100,000 a year, that means only $25,000 to, to survive one quarter, one extra quarter per person. That's $10 million, okay? So $10 million is all they needed to do is to get from, from basically get through a rough quarter to the next one that they're anticipating being great. But now the next quarter is going to be awesome because they let all these people go. And then again, they're going to rehire them all and it's going to turn into a big old mess. And so I'm not saying I, I'm looking at this number. It's like, it, and I'm sure nobody here is going to be like, you know, <laughs> it's going to be like, Oh man, those poor CEOs, those poor C level positions. This is, we should, we shouldn't take their money. They earned that. Uh, I, I do feel like there's a limit to like what makes sense when you, when you talk about, you know, what the, the top five people at a company make versus the bottom. When like the top five people collectively, except for this poor guy, Chris Brozo, what a fuck, what a fucking, look at this guy. This guy is on welfare, man. Holy shit. $5 million a year. <sighs> what a, what a junk. <laughs> uh, I need my fourth pull. I know, I know. I need my, I need a new yacht. <sighs> um, but yeah, there, there's definitely discrepancy here. It's like, can I squeeze $10 million out of, out of these people? Yeah, you know, some of it's an equity, but you can still you can still leverage this money somehow, right? You can still leverage some money somewhere, but it's not a problem. That's not the problem. Like they they they're not looking at it like that. They're they're using people as an asset, as a disposable asset that they could just be like, cool. Here's all this this money that we're basically constantly churning in labor, right? And it's like, okay, well, we need to trim we need to trim the cost because we had a, we're gonna have a, we have a rough quarter because Battlefield Five didn't do as well as we thought. Fucking surprise, uh, and you know, we know the next quarter is going to be good. What can we do? Well, we could probably trim. Nah, let's just get rid of 350 people. Fucking A. He's in the, I know he's in the bread line. This poor fucking guy. <sighs> it didn't cost. Yeah. So there's, there, like I said, there, there are, there is some equity signing bonus, all the options, stock options, all this stuff. But what I'm saying is that when somebody's value is beyond a certain amount, you know, there's money somewhere that can be that if, if, if the, if the actual concern was Let's try to keep people employed so we don't have to lay off a bunch of folks and put them out in the street. If that was an actual concern, they said they did say, oh, they get severance and all that. Fuck all that. They still don't have a job. All right. They still don't have a job. Uh, if the concern was the people, they would have made changes. But the concern is not the people. So they didn't make changes. And uh, the only change they did was they just took that that ball of, of, of that hamster wheel, <laughs> that hamster ball, of all these working little hamsters, was like, whoop, just threw it out the window. That's pretty much it. They'll, they'll go get it again once they, uh, once they have their good quarter and they can go and spend that, spend that money to make something else that, uh, like a Battlefield 6, mobile, BR, all that. Lion pockets of shareholders, stock value goes up, money, uh, more money being moved around. 
Yeah, it's it's. I mean, there's. I know that. I know that there's like there's corporate there's corporate needs. Sure, uh, but it's very obvious that we've seen not just with EA with Blizzard with a bunch of other companies doing layoffs this year. Um, that the um, well, I can't really throw everybody in that in that barrel. I wouldn't. I wouldn't throw ArenaNet in there. But uh, they're in a lot of situations, a lot of scenarios. It is very obvious that that the concern is not you know let's make a good product and keep these good people like on the payroll and continue making good product and everything. Uh, it's basically hire a bunch of people, get something done. It's not working out. Just let them go, and then try again next quarter. It's just so shitty. It's so shitty. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but that's it. So I guess. I guess next next show we'll have another another company that's laying people off that we'll talk about. Sad. <sighs> Speaking of sad, but also kind of hilarious, we shift gear a little bit. Gears. Squeenix did something kind of silly, and I believe some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like so. First off, this popped up, and it is Risa era, but we're not going Risa era. We're in uh, uh, we're in Reddit here, but. Square Enix, actually, this is a bright screen. Prepare your retinas. Square Enix accidentally added online DRM to a couple Final Fantasy games, um, or one. And it turns out it was a bug with how it handles uh, Steam's DRM when in offline mode. And this happened with other games. Actually, these guys put it right here. It's right here. Actually, this is why I have this comment saved. Uh, Sonic Mania, a medical Metal Gear Rising, where uh, they because they they made an update and they didn't test it in offline mode, and what happened was it would crash. It w it wasn't like a a check fail. It was just it was just they they didn't work with Steamworks correctly in offline mode, and then it, and then it would just crash. And so for like a thirty six hour period, people were enraged. They were like, "Why the fuck would they add DRM?" To to a to an old ass game like why would they do that now? That doesn't make any sense. You're right, it doesn't make sense because they didn't do it on purpose. It is a pretty hilarious uh, <laughs> error on their part that they actually ended up fixing two days later. So good for them. I still want to report it because I thought that was pretty hilarious uh, that they um, that they would they would possibly make a mistake like that. It's just great. Ear ah uh, ear is always hilarious. Uh, uh let's see what else do i have here let me see boop this is ah uh, blow oh yeah blown out of proportion totally i mean people because people believe that they would do that like, oh yeah squeenix would totally do that kind of thing i mean would they though like that's this i feel like that's kind of kind of a kind of a push there um apple announces its own game service have you guys heard about this you guys heard about this mm, 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 mm. here comes all the android users now the chat's caught up let's hear it Apple sucks. Go. No, no. Apple, there it is. Oh yeah. Woo. All right. So, what's an Apple? So Apple. <laughs> so Apple's announcing a uh, uh, a new. I guess I guess it's like a Meta platform or something. Apple Arcade is, they also announced Apple TV, by the way, but we don't give a shit about that. It's basically Netflix, but with Apple products, uh, or with Apple funded shows and, and, and other shows that they got on, got in the lineup. They actually have a whole bunch of movies on, uh, Apple, Apple, uh, store, Apple store, Apple music, not music. I think Apple store. Um, they have like a shitload of movies, and everything on there, but, uh, they don't have a streaming service kind of like, like Netflix and Hulu and all that. So they want to get in on that. As as always, as it seems this past like decade, uh, Apple is the last person to jump into the party. Apple, Blizzard, all of them. Let's see what everybody else does, and let's do that and say this is revolutionary. Never before have we seen something this powerful. Fuck off. Um, so they did announce their own game subscription service, and this is actually a good thing. Notice that like everybody's going into the whole like curated thing. Everything's curated. Oh, come over here. It's curated. It's curated. Cur everything's fucking curated. Um, I guess, I guess nobody believes in the power of filtering your own shit to try to like get through things that you don't like, but, uh, Apple Arcade, Apple Arcade is set up in a way that the games that are going to be available on that will not have ads. They will not 
be like siphoning your information or any of that stuff. There's no microtransactions. There's no gated content. If you've played probably any mobile game, not any, but most mobile games have some kind of shitty gating system. Watch this ad if you want to play again. Oh, you died. Do you want to, Do you want another life? Watch this ad. Uh, rate, rate us in the shop. Rate us in the shop. You'll give you another whatever super bubble so you can get through the thing. Fuck. So that's pretty much the gist of game. I mean, look at like Trials Frontier. Trials Frontier has like a ticket system and you only earn so many tickets like per day or whatever where you could buy more tickets. And these are the tickets, these tickets you need in order to play certain parts of the game. Uh, you can't just play it as much as you want. You had to pay for the right to play. And if you talk to anybody that plays like Bubble Bitch or um, uh, Candy Crush or any of those games, they have to deal with the same thing, right? Where they basically have to watch, you know, an ad or, or do something or they run out of turns or energy or whatever they call, uh, they call it in whatever game. It's, it sucks. It sucks. It really sucks. You guys like Bubble Bitch? <laughs> I think some of you guys know what it is. Other people are like, what? It's called Bubble Witch, but my wife calls it Bubble Bitch uh, because because she says it cheats. She, and I believe her. She plays it so much that she probably knows when it's cheating and when it's not. They don't give her the thing that she needs in order to do the thing. That's cheating. Um, so anyways, Apple Arcade is something that's coming. Uh, it's a uh, it's going to be a uh, you have access to a library of curated games. It's going to cost a certain amount of money every month. We don't know what that what that is, but devs get. Um, Devs get uh, uh, paid based off of how long people play games. And at first I was like, that sounds terrible because there's a lot of these games where like they just find reasons to make you um, to make you spend longer in their game. But at the same time, I feel like those would get filtered out because if if I if if I played a game where it was like, oh, why don't you do this thing that takes four hours? And it's like, okay, this guy's clear. Whatever, fuck you. I'll play something else. I feel like they would lose time on that. Uh, he says, so 90% of the devs will get nothing. You think so? Do you think that, that the devs will mostly get nothing from this service? Uh, I feel like if they did, they would, they, they would say something. Um, but we don't know. Yeah, we have no idea. If, if, if I don't know what the, what the percentage or what the dollar amount per second would be, or if it's round up to a minute or what, I have absolutely no idea. If, but we know, here's what we know. We know that the, um, we know that the, the monthly subscription cost is going to be $9, give or take five bucks, right? Give or take five bucks. It could be $4.99. It could be $14.99. If it's $19.99, that's, a, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Uh, $9.99, I feel like is probably maybe $12.99 or something like that. Uh, Everything Apple seems to be 10 bucks a month at the moment. So there you go. Yeah. So it's probably another $9, you know, $9.99, uh, $10 a month uh, deal. So you figure if you play, I mean, I don't play a lot of mobile games because I, I, because of all the reasons I've already described here today. Um, if I play a game for 10 hours, how much money does that person, does that dev get? If that game normally would have cost, you know, five bucks on the app store, are they going to get five bucks? I play 10 hours and then stop. So we don't know what these things are, but you can be sure that we will know after the service is released because devs will be like, Hey, so I just got this thing and this is, this is the contract that they gave to me. And this is how much they want to pay me based off a permanent thing. So we don't know now, but we will definitely know. Uh, do you think they'll wait out Stradia? I mean, that could be what they're doing because we don't know anything about what Stradia is doing or Stradia Stadia. Um, we don't know what they're doing, so we'll have to just wait and see. But we have all these announcements. We have all these fucking announcements, but no prices on anything. We Borderlands 3, no idea how much that's going to cost. Uh, or like when it's going to be released. Uh, Stadia, no idea how much it's going to cost. Uh, Apple Arcade, no idea how much it's going to cost. <laughs> we have no idea. Like, this, this whole episode has just been nothing but things that just like, oh yeah, well, I guess we'll check back later. Uh... But yeah, bonus three is probably gonna be a stand triple A game price. I mean, I meant like that we don't have all the information for it. So in that case, that's why I said it, the release date. Uh, I guess Apple keeps half the money and then the rest of your money is split over the games you play during the month. Well, that would be kind of interesting. That would be kind of interesting. We're gonna have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Because we don't know. No pricing info yet. Developers get paid based on how long people play their games. 
<sighs> yeah. Yeah, just shit. Um, news shrug edition. <laughs> not all of it. Not all of it. I actually don't, you know, I don't actually have a, hmm. Let me find an article for this. I just have an article for this. I just got this from, um, from just what I know. From what I know. Let me see. We, eh, bam. Okay. Bam. Done. That's old. Article. Here we go. All right. It's got to get an article as we can have it on the second page. <gasps> article 13! Now known as Article 17, is, uh, uh, hasn't passed. Your memes are safe. Your memes are safe. That's still not a good thing, though. That's still not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. Because the whole thing is still terrible. All right, so here's a summary for those of you guys who live under a rock. Article 11, we'll start with Article 11, okay? Article 11 states that search engines and news aggregate platforms should pay to use links from news sites. <sighs> Which I think that's silly. I mean, like, that, that means that, you know, like Google would have to pay a site to use a link when I feel like Google is the reason why people find those fucking sites to begin with. That's Article 11, yes, but this is part of it. This is part of it. That's what I said. God damn it, I'm, I'm, I'm saying these things, you're not hearing me. All right, uh, Article 13, now known as Article 17, uh, was meant to bring an update to EU's data copyright rules. States that platforms can be held responsible for uploaded content. That part is super important. And I'm actually gonna let Emmett Shear tell you why. You know who Emmett Shear is? He's, he works at Twitch, he's kind of a big deal. Impact then if Article 13 passes, you know, what what will what will Twitch do, right? If we, we play the game of like this this passes when the vote happens later this month, you know, what what would what would we do? I mean, fundamentally to protect ourselves and our creators, we would have to go implement uh, some sort of automated filtration system uh, that would go uh, very conservatively stop anything from going out in, in Europe that uh, that could be a copyright violation. Uh, that's a uh, very uh, that's a very low bar, unfortunately. Um, so, like, uh, for example, really simple one: poster in the background of your room uh, that has like a movie poster. Someone owns a copyright on that. Can that be? Is that fair use or not? No, well, there's a really Mega Man poster behind them. We are 100% liable if it turns out that it's not fair use. Right. And so, anything like that has to be taken. <laughs> Like that, for example. So, yeah, that's that's his that's his take on it. This was actually posted uh, March 8, 2019, uh, from obviously you know, DJ Wee and uh, Emmett Shear sat down and talked a little bit about this, trying to bring awareness to the um, you know to the issue. Is that you know we don't know exactly how they're going to try to enforce this because now that it's passed, member states have two years to work it into law, meaning there could be several different levels of interpretation on how they adhere to the directive. Meaning, in some, in some areas, it could be, oh yeah, if, if, if literally anything gets said that is, uh, that is copyrightable, then we're going to flag you for it or whatever. We're going to fine you for it or whatever. Uh, and in another case, it could be like, it'd be like, yeah, I mean, like if somebody uploads an entire movie to YouTube, then sure, we'll go after YouTube for it. That makes sense. That makes sense. But. Everything is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be different depending on where you live, depending on who, how they interpret it. And it's going to take, you know, it's, they have two years to actually implement it. But from what I've read, the EU is not particularly good at, um, at enforcing those things. So in some cases, it could probably take more. Uh, since five of the officials that voted yes on the amendments came out yesterday stating, oops, we meant to vote the other way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw that. Anyone that doesn't understand enough about the bill of the internet should not be allowed to vote on its future. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? If people who... We had this discussion in, um, I think, in uh, Shitty Earth. Uh, it's our it's our shitty politics and whatever uh, section of uh, Discord. It's a very busy channel, actually. Um, where somebody somebody made the suggestion, suggestion that... Uh, Older folks shouldn't have of as much voting power as younger folks. And I, under, I understand what that person is saying. They're saying, hey, if you're 80 years old, don't vote on something that's, that's going to fuck up something 20 years from now. Because you're not going to be here 20 years from now. Everybody else has to live with the shit. 
I understand what they're saying. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because people have a thing called human rights. You can't say somebody's a lesser person. Remember the three quarter thing, right? Like there's there there's reasons why we don't do those kinds of things. We made a mistake in the past. We don't want to make it again. But when it comes to like an actual understanding of how certain things work that you're meant to vote on, maybe that's when your vote doesn't fucking count. Maybe that's what we could do the whole whatever. Oh, your vote, you know, your vote only counts for 50 percent because you have absolutely no idea what the fuck this is. And it happens all the time. We don't owe people vote that maybe it's just, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat, repeat that. Kappa, 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 Kappa. Uh, just make the vote on WeChat and all the, <laughs> WeChat, the ones that are the, they just censored a bunch of shit for, uh, from Canada, actually, on that. Oh, Tencent. Um, weighted voting is an interesting concept, right? Yeah, I mean, wh wh why not? Why not? Here's a workaround. Why not? Sure, if you're really old and you know nothing about technology, your vote still counts. But somebody that's between the ages of 20 and 34, they get a 1.33 vote per person. You're not any less of a person, excuse me, you're not any less of a person. This person just might be a little bit more because they actually know what they're voting on. So yeah, it's, it's, this is going to be, this is going to be a really interesting couple of years. Different, different countries are going to have different ways that they implement it at different times. Some of them are going to rush to get all that shit out and they're going to be like, hey, let's, let's just ban everything. Or some of them will be like, you know what? If there's a, if there's a movie, then that's what we're going to go after. But other than that, like, fuck it. It's stupid. It's truly the darkest timeline. It is. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And, and I have seen, I don't know how I have seen, um, some people say it's not that big of a deal. There was like a guy that was a lawyer or something like that. It was like, Oh, it's not that big of a deal. Fuck you. Fuck you. It is a big deal because just because this one thing doesn't single handedly take down the internet, the way we know it now, the freedom of distribution of information, um, just because it didn't take this down by itself, it set, it has actually set the precedence that we can actually go down that path. It paved the road. It paved the road to make that happen. This should have never passed. <laughs> this should have never passed. Maybe this recount will actually happen, this vote recount, and it won't happen. And then all we're all getting worked up over nothing. But this absolutely should never have happened to begin with. And so people defending that. Yeah, a small snowball becomes an, ad, an avalanche. Exactly. Somebody that somebody so somebody defending that, I just feel like you're just you're just trying to play devil's advocate. <gasps> but to be fair, fuck. Without privacy laws working in Europe, they are going to be fighting an uphill battle to trying to curate this. I uh, can't have recounts in democracies. Haven't you heard about Brexit? Oh man, Brexit. I, I'm not touching that. Besides the fact that I don't fully understand how that, how this, cause that whole thing is just so fucked up. I don't fully understand that. I don't fully understand how the government works over there. Uh, it just seems it's entertaining to watch, but yeah, just, just everything, everything over there, just everything on that side of the world seems really weird right now. In flux technological wise, te technological wise, um, just make PewDiePie EU emperor. Uh, let's see, can we reduce the value of people blindly voting an entire, uh, ballot for one democratic party? Because that's what. They are. I don't, I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're saying, Joe. Um, no one understands it. That's what I thought. Even the UK doesn't understand how Brexit works. Oh, there it is. Uh, Bri <laughs> Please, America. You guys saw, I tweeted out the other day. It's like, hey, man, you know, we've worked together in the past. You know, good old, good old America and, 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 and UK, Great Britain. Like, we've worked together in the past. We could do it again. Sure, the hierarchy may have shifted a little bit. We could take you guys under our wing. We don't have a problem with that. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. We could go over there without a passport. You come over here without a passport. We could be friends. We could just throw another star on there somewhere. It'll be awesome. It'll be like a family reunion. We got it, man. We could work together on this. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Ren. Um, so yeah, it's uh some of the people, some so some of the concerns for YouTubers is that, and I don't know if you guys know this, but if I go into my, if I go to a, like a, like for example, this video, right, that's going to be on YouTube, I can actually set it to exclude uh, certain countries, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I can exclude certain countries from the from from being able to actually see that video, and if this passes, 
And there's there's a threat of like, oh man, I might get a copyright strike because because I got Frida back here in the background. Sure, she's out of focus, but she's there. It's like somebody might be like, hey, that's copyrighted material. Guess what? And it's like, wow, just uh, just we'll, I guess I guess we'll just stop serving content to people in the EU. I don't want to do that. I would say probably half of you guys live in the EU. I just look at the names right here. It's like I know half of you guys are in the EU. But but that's something that creator is going to have to. Oh, man, the Sennheiser logo. That's right. Oh, my God. I have to cover that with tape. See? Yeah. It's like a rap video. You know, they have like blur on like I like the shirts and shit. <laughs> it's, it's like that. It's just going to happen. People will be forced to use VPNs is dumb, inconvenient and easily circumvented. I know. I know. I know. But but unfortunately, it's also slow um, and not as uh, reliable. But it's something. It's something. I mean, if it means that you could surf Reddit. I mean, Reddit's low bandwidth. You can go there. Oil, <laughs> oil discovered in the UK. Yeah, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Oil. What? Bring over some of the freedom. Listen, man. Freedom units, in terms of like, you know, form measurement, feet, all that stuff, right? Miles. It's super easy to get used to. So all of you, all, I mean, you guys could probably keep the metric system if you want, really. But just, we'll just band together. It'll be great. I think it'll be awesome. I think we'll have parties and everything and we'll get along. But I would much rather just have a sane and free internet. Sounds like this is a hippie thing. Free internet. It's true, though. It's free. Divisible by 10. Oh, who wants that shit? <laughs> who wants that? You guys have to be the world leader in hydrogen-based economy. Well, once we can figure out how to make a good coin off that, we'll be right over. It's not possible. Yeah, I want, I want, I want a sane and open, insane internet. Really. I mean, even the internet now is, is uh, uh, culturally restrictive versus what it was, you know, 20 years ago when we were all on forums on like random sites like okay so i have i have a backup of i used to run a forums like way back in the day uh and it was a pretty busy it was a pretty busy site um and i have hundreds of thousands of 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 forum posts and and, and, and replies and all that shit from back then and I actually loaded it up into, uh, uh, I actually loaded it up to kind of go through and view some of the posts. I was like, oh shit, I wonder what kind of stuff that I said back then or whatever. And there's some stuff that I said back then that I was just like, yikes, I can't say that now. Like not, not just like cringy stuff. Right. Um, but just like, just kind of going along with like stupid jokes that I really shouldn't have been not like racist shit or anything like that, but still stuff that I wouldn't necessarily want to share anymore. And other things that people have said back then where it's like, you just shrug it off. It's like, oh my God, there's, there's incogni being weird again. You know, that's, that's what you would say. Uh, and you would just ignore that person. But now, no, no, no. Now, if, if, if my site then existed now, I would be the harbinger of evil. I would be, oh man, this is a safe place for, for, for alt-right Nazis and shit. And it's like, hold on a second. These are a couple of people from like all over the world that just like dick flowers and they post that shit all over the place. Like, I'm sorry. It's not exactly what you were looking for in a, in a nice safe place to post whatever the fuck you want to talk about. But maybe go try another forums. But now that all of our social media and all of our interactions are all like, con are, they're all like put together into like one tiny bubble of Instagram and, and Twitter and basically it. Now, all of a sudden, it's, it's, you're, you, you have to be careful of everything. You, you, there, you have to, what is it? Uh, like-minded or same think or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, yeah. Don, dick flowers are a dog whistle for white supremacy. Dick flower. I hope no one looked that up. It's a real thing. And it is something, yes, there's a lot. Goat seeds is the other, one, the other one too. God damn it. Fuck it, goat seeds. Burning, burning in my brain. Would never fucking forget that shit. These fucks. Uh, <laughs> the hive mind, double think. Yeah. People need to stop being, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's funny, actually. You know, I... Uh, Gordon Ramsay did that Hot Ones episode. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Yes, it's over the top. Gordon Ramsay is a showman. He definitely likes to push it and everything, but he does make a couple of, he makes a couple of comments that makes you think. It's like, oh, Gordon Ramsay. He's what he said. He said, uh, uh, he said something about like all the, all these snowflakes today where they, um, I'm trying, I don't remember what he said verbatim, but he did say something about snowflakes today. They don't believe that if you, if you, if you grow up and people are pushing you and they're tough on you, it'll make you stronger. And I believe that 
I believe that, yeah, you know, it's like, it's like coddle, coddling doesn't always equal somebody who's going to be able to survive and thrive in an industry where they're constantly being belittled and, and, and beat up where they want to you know, survive in. Um, oh yeah. You know, I didn't actually have that on my list. That just came out. I totally grabbed that. Thank you so much. Got it. Thank you so much, Reinhardt. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, anyways, I thought it was interesting because you don't really get any political like discussions on what well, hell's kitchen and 24 hours to hell and back and all this other shit, you know, uh, it's just, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it was an interesting, interesting to see Gordon Ramsay kind of just go off topic a little bit. I hate that shit, the attitude that I had the, the fucking shit abuse out of me. So I have to continue to cycle of abuse. No, it's not, it's not, he's not saying you have to abuse somebody. He was talking about being, working in a kitchen where he was being pushed to the limit to, to make him a better chef. He was being held to a standard that was so far beyond his own comprehension that he had to, that he had to basically get, you know, pushed around until it was, it was, I, I want to say that ag exact comment that he made, uh, oh, we saw about pots of pans be thrown at him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. saw about pots of pans be thrown at him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, still <laughs> in a situation where you know that he was in where he's he's trying he needs to basically elevate his work he's gonna he's gonna have to you know take take a few punches i uh, i don't like it but you know what i was in the military i took a few punches to and i feel like it made me a better person i'm not saying that i would ever punch someone to make them a better person i don't think that works i don't think that works at all but it it, and it, the structural, I guess, what do they call it? Like when the military is like structural reformity or whatever the fuck that did work. I was an asshole. <laughs> I was a jerk, uh, before the military. I still kind of am not much, not much. Now it's a little more structured. Uh, there was a time when it worked. Although, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with them in a term. I'm not saying throw pots of pans at people or anything like that, but I kind of agree with some of that. Uh, let's not try, let's not try to like really tear that down and like kind of really dig deep into that because then we're going in a direction that I don't want. I didn't want to go with that comment. All right. Sorry about your feelings. Um, <laughs> let's see. I guess I, oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, we have more. Hold on. Hold on. I catch up with chat here. Declan protection squad. Don't worry. I've never hit Declan. I, I think I've pinched him or something. I've pinched him before. Just go, he's like, Declan, stop that. There's a little pinch on the butt or something like that. But that's it. Um, I've never hit him. I was hit when I was growing up. I was hit. I mean, not like punched or anything like that, but I was, I got the belt. I got the belt. Mm-hmm. Yep. I learned to fear that shit. My dad would sit me down. He said, he said, and like, this is verbatim. And I feel like every parent has said this to their kid. The ones that like, you know, got beat. Um, they said this, this, he had his belt out and he said, and he was sitting on the bed. He said my brother's bed cause we shared a room. Um, and my mom had sent my mom had sent him in there to, uh, to give me a spanking cause I'd done something wrong. I don't remember what I did. Uh, and he said, <laughs> he took off his belt and he says, Mikey, I just want you to know this hurts me more than it hurts you. And, <laughs> and I was just like, really? <laughs> cause it really hurts. And so, and so he put me over his knee and he whack he didn't hit me too hard though like he like it, it, it felt like like he like he pulled up and, you know you kind of like ah before he even hits you like that's what i did and it's still still psh. uh and yeah he gave me a good spanking and that was pretty much it um i'm not saying that it helped with anything but it didn't hurt me much i don't think like i i don't have these moments where i'm just like oh man if only my dad didn't spank me those those several times uh it was telling about that shit is when the parent stops but the parents saw what? Hold on. Like once my brother and I could beat the shit out of my dad, he saw trying physical punishment. Oh, well, unfortunately, my dad is a big guy. I will. I, I even to this day, I don't think I could be I could beat my dad in a fight. I could run from him. I'll be really good. At, I could run. But but when you're in your room and he's standing next to the door, there's no running. <laughs> there's no running. Um. Yes, I know there's extreme punishment and abuse. See, that's why I don't want this discussion to go in a weird direction because all of a sudden it's like, oh, you got spanked as a kid. Abuse, CPS. No, no, no. Jesus. I don't want it to go there. I'm not saying you're doing it, but somebody will. Somebody always does. Tron, welcome. Alerts oh, turned off. We're doing a new show right now. When was the last time you read? No, no. My dad and I, we had some pretty good fights and I always lost. I always lost. Um... But I mean, I love my dad. I, th I think that, I mean, I, I know that he never meant to hurt me or do anything like that. And, um, he, he, just, we did what he thought that that's how he was raised. He went to get a switch off the tree. He told me all the time. It's like, you're lucky. I'm not making you get a switch off the tree. Like grandma teen did. 
<laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, love concussions. There it is. All right. Speaking of love, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch. This is a rumor mill, by the way. So, rumor mill. Uh, Nintendo reportedly cooking up two, two Switch models. One is going to be the, the Elite model, the Pro model, maybe. The other one is going to be, we don't have, they have a fucking picture on this article just struck that way. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We'll leave the picture up. Um, you are logged out. Oh, God damn it. I made that annoying. So the, the rumor is that we're going to have a basic model that's probably not going to have a um, uh, HD rumble. It's probably not going to have a few other features. Like a, probably, maybe the controllers won't come off or something like that. Uh, who knows? We don't know. The Pro model prob probably going to have a uh, uh, better hardware, a better screen, better everything. I look at this as kind of like the transition from the DS to the uh, 2DS and 3DS, right? I mean, there's a 2D. I mean, granted, there's, yeah, there's a 2DS XL and the 3DS XL or whatever. Like, there's a bunch of different models or something. But just looking at it from like, yeah, we had the DS and then we had the 2DS and the 3DS. Both of them can play the original DS games. Um, New 3DS XL. I know there's so many things. Jesus Christ. Like, the new. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, and so, yeah, I figured this is probably the same thing. It's too, it's too soon for them. To, there's no way in hell this is going to be a new game format. Like, they're not going to come out and be like, hey, most popular, you know, handheld console in the past you know, five years, we're going to change the format up. Nah, they're going to, they're just going to make it. Um, they're just going to make it cross compatible or like, I guess, reverse compatible or whatever. So that way people can play those games on the better hardware. Uh, and I'm also guessing that the even the basic model will probably still have better hardware than the original Switch. So if you're planning on buying a Switch, wait until after E3, because that's likely when we're going to get the uh, 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 the announcement that there's going to be some new um, new hardware coming out. Nintendo has a very big presence at at every E3. So the old, the old new 3DS D 2DS XL Lite. That's right. <laughs> Hopefully it can stream Netflix. Dude, Hulu works on it. I could put Hulu on it, but not Netflix. Because it's just not, I guess, I guess the store doesn't approve it or something. I'm not sure why. Um E3 dead. I know. Uh who pulled out? P PlayStation pulled out. Bad jokes. Uh PlayStation pulled out, but Xbox and Nintendo are still there. And like I said, Nintendo's got a uh, um, a fairly large presence at every E3. So no Hulu in the UK. Further reasons for Brexit. Man, am I supposed to be supporting Brexit or not? Guys, tell me. Tell me right now, chat, quick. I'm not trying to get into politics, but just tell me. Tell me. What, 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 am, I, am I supposed to support it or not? What do I do? No? No? It's up to me. Oh, don't leave it up to me. I don't know how this shit works. When I want to ask how, how it works. You guys are like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, most definitely. Whatever you want. I do not. Sure. It's pretty funny to keep tabs on. Oh, wait, no. What? <laughs> uh, everybody about Brexit says it's going to turn out bad. Over 50% of the people would say, yes, you should support it. Especially the Ireland stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter what, you, what side you support. It's a fucking mess. I believe that. That's what it looks like from my perspective. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that my shit don't stink here in the U.S. We've got our own issues, all right? I know. I'm, all I'm saying is that it's still kind of amusing to see that other people have problems as well. Um, I'm in Northern Ireland, very much do not support it. Well, uh, Ireland, they have a, um, they had the vote to, to separate from the U.K. before the Brexit vote, right? I don't want, again, I don't want to go down this, this route or anything like that, but still, I am genuinely curious about this, and I'll probably look it up later. Or maybe there's like a cool little video uh, that like breaks it down with like animations and shit. That way, I can, like, someone like me can actually like <laughs> like follow. Oh, that was Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, that was. Oh, it's CCP uh, CGP Gray's latest video explained pretty clearly what's going on right now. Perfect. That that was actually what I was thinking. Like animations in my head. I was thinking of that. Perfect. Okay, I will. I will look into that. We do have some more news. Do, 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 breaking news. This one actually comes from Reinhardt. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, so this is actually, this is good news. Ish. This is good news-ish. You guys remember 
Oh, I got the details right. You guys know what swatting is? I don't have to actually explain that. Um, so this guy, well, I'll just read the first part here. 26 year old California resident Tyler Barris has been sentenced to 20 years in prison today after pleading guilty to, call, to placing a swatting call that led to the death of 28 year old father of two in Kansas. Um, so basically, a SWAT call happened, which we know swatting is, especially in this industry where swatting is. Um, they showed up at this guy's house. The guy who answered the door got shot. There's video of it. It's fucked up. They they definitely overreacted, the SWAT team did. But it ex it's exactly what we had said would happen. We knew that eventually somebody was going to die because of swatting. It's a very shitty thing. Um, it's extraordinarily fucked up. He is getting 20 years. And I said this in shitty earth too, uh, but 20 years doesn't seem like enough, especially when a father of two is now dead because of your actions, right? It does not seem like enough, but at least it's, it's enough where it might actually deter some folks from doing it. Someone might look at that and say 20, cause no one's gonna look at 20 years and be like, oh, well, I mean, I can handle, yeah, sure. I can handle 20 years. Nobody, 20 years is a fucking long time. So yeah, the guy's life is super done, right? Like definitely done monkey. Absolutely. Life would have been great, but 20 years definitely sounds like, sounds like worse than at least life. You're like set for life. You know that you're going to be in jail for the rest of your life. You're going to have food and shelter 20 years. You're going to get out. 20 years older. This guy, how old is he? 26. He's going to be 46 years old. He's 46 years old when he comes out. He's going to have no job skills. He, I doubt he has any skills right now. Uh, and, I mean, he's, he's fucked. So, his life is never going to be reformed. Obviously, that doesn't, you know, ex uh, excuse the actions against a 28-year-old father of two. The kids will be in their 20s when he comes out. Yeah. Uh, Sorrells, if you want to get in, there's been a, so, oh, okay, you know what? I'm going to copy this and, and, and hold that for later. Sorrells, thank you so much. Hard levers. Hard levers. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, this is, I mean, this is at least, it's at least good-ish news that somebody's going to have to, you know, go do some time for, for an action that we knew was going to lead to somebody getting hurt, and it did. So... Good. Fuck that guy. Absolutely good. And fuck that guy. Uh, la I mean, la Yo! word on the street is that nobody's ever gotten any Soldier Boy electronics that they order from the Soldier Boy electronics show uh, or store. And Soldier Boy went on Instagram and said that uh, he's going to sue anybody that's spreading these lies, fake stories, all that good stuff. That's it. So, yay, we're finished with the news. We had to squeeze. I mean, it's it was a thing that happened, but it wasn't really real. I'm not sure. Yo! All right, cool. Oh man, you know what that means. Ah, <laughs> oh, all right. So we're done. We're done. Thank you so much, Mister Boy. Gonna lawyer up. That's right. He's gonna go after them. Mm -hmm. They should be. You know, they should. They should reply with soldier. Soldier ain't gonna do shit. Uh, you missed the Randy talk. I know it's at the very beginning. Go back. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. You can follow me, aka Mike B, on Twitch, Twitter, all that. These guys right here, thank you so much for being my co host. Uncle Chat has been absolutely lovely today. I appreciate them. I appreciate them hooking me up with links for the show, telling me a little bit about Brexit, correcting me about Scotland, and all that good stuff. You guys are just the best. Just the best. Thank you so much. I did nothing, just guy. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Now bring out the puppy. No, we got the puppy last time. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. If you're watching live, just hang out for a second. We're going to play Outward with, uh, with Shizzle. That should be a lot of fun. So that's it. Thank you so much. We will see you guys later. So, you want to hear a story, huh? Well, so, you want to hear a story, huh? Well, so, you want to hear a story, huh? Well, so, you want to hear a story, huh? Well. <laughs>